Hey everyone, how are you doing? Did you ever notice this object which is called GGL Isosurf? Because I haven't used it in any of my videos so far. And I was actually asked about it by one of my patrons. I was asked, uh, what actually does this object do? How does it work? How can we use it? And uh, I didn't know, so I started to explore it and uh, it turns out it's pretty cool. So let's dive in and see how this actually works. So in order to understand what uh, the GGL ISO surface does, we need to understand what an ISO surface is. And uh, ISO comes from the ancient Greek and basically means equal. So in fact, an ISO surface it's um, a 3D shape in a three-dimensional space in which every point that represents the surface of the shape all have the same value. So all the points that form the surface of this 3D shape all are marked with the same value. So imagine that we have like a three-dimensional grid. I will make it two-dimensional for a moment because I, I cannot drive, draw a three-dimensional grid. And imagine that in this grid there are some points that have all the same value. So just a scalar value is not a vector. They all have the same scalar value, for example, one. And then what uh, if we feed these values to GGL ISO surface, it will connect them using vertices because it will recognize that they all have the same scalar value. So the whole volume of the shape is represented by points that all have the same value inside. Now imagine this thing in 3D. So that's exactly what's going on here. It's actually pretty straightforward. So let's start from scratch and see how we can create our own uh, ISO surface with GGL ISO Surf. Okay, so first thing first, I will get my world plus the camera here, right? And then I need the, the GGL ISO Surface object. GGL ISO Surf. And let's first take a look at its help file. Because this actually explains pretty well what's going on uh, with ISO surfaces. So I start to render here. And we can see, we can see that there's been uh, some noise. So in GTBFG, so a, a matrix containing some noise values uh, fed into the GGL ISO surface. Uh, the particularity is that this matrix has three dimensions, so 32 by 32 by 32, but only a single plane. So it's only a scalar value, uh, which is uh, distributed into three dimensions. And as we say, the GGL ISO surface is looking for points in this matrix that all have the same value, all right? And this, this value that it looks for is defined by the ISO level. So if we make it bigger, it means that it's going to look for points that all have the value 0.29 in this case. And as when we make it smaller, it's going to look for points that have a smaller value. Of course, we will have more points that have small values instead of points that have uh, bigger values. So if we make this value bigger, we will see that uh, uh, the points get less and less. So it's just representing, uh, connecting with vertices, the points in this matrix that have the same value. Um, the epsilon here represents basically the, the step to calculate the normals for the object. So it's related with how the light interacts with the object. And then we have the dimensions, um, which are the dimensions on our three-dimensional virtual grid that the object uses to create the shape. So if we read here the description, the polygonization occurs at locations where the density values intersect the edges of cells inside the subdivided Cartesian grid. So the subdivided Cartesian grid is basically our 3D grid and uh, the polygonization, so where the vertices are created, where the polygons are created, is where those values uh, inside the matrix that we feed, basically are the same value as the ISO level. Okay, so that's all what is going on. It's actually pretty straightforward. Good, now to cement our knowledge in, let's start from scratch and make our own ISO surface. So let's give it uh, main rendering context. 
Let's give it also dimension 64 by 64 by 64. The more, um, the bigger we make this grid, the more detail we will have, but the more slow the algorithm is going to be, because this is a pretty intensive algorithm actually, and it works only on the CPU. So we have to be to be careful with the size of this uh, of this three dimensional grid. 64 by 64 by 64 is actually a pretty good dimension. And then let's create a treat matrix with only one plane, float 32 uh, with 64 by 64 by 64 cells. Let's send that inside the JITGen, in which we will write our algorithm. And let's send this into GGL ESOSURF. This is my rendering window up here. And let's connect this to the uh, rendering bang that we get from JITWorld. Cool, and as you can see, nothing is displayed because all the values inside this matrix are just zeros. Let's uh, get our ISO level attribute here and, and put it here so we can modify it if we need it. And let's go inside JITGen. So by double clicking, uh, we can go inside the JITGen by simply double clicking on the object or creating an open message and sending it to JITGen, which is actually, for lazy people like me, it's great. So inside here, um, let's actually going to use code box, right? Because uh, it's actually much easier to work um, uh, with the code box in this case, because we're going to reuse a couple of uh, portions of code multiple times. So this actually makes it much more clear what's going on. It's much more order, ordinately. Okay, cool. So let's say that we want to create a sphere using GGL as a surface. So we want to fill cells in our three-dimensional matrix in a way that all the cells that are on the edge of our shape will have the value one, right? So we don't want to create vertices, we just want to fill uh, cells in this three-dimensional matrix in order that the ones on the edge or even the ones inside will have the value one. Okay, so... To do that, we can go here and create um, a function and call it uh, like sphere. And this is kind of a sign distance function. So if you're familiar with Ray Marching, and if you are not, I highly suggest you to check Matteo Mars in tutorials. So a sign the distance function uh, is a function that returns us the distance between a point and a three dimensional shape. Now, um, we use this because this allows us to define the volume in which an object is contained. So it's actually perfect for ISO surfaces. So for example, if we input like our UV coordinates, so basically just um, the three dimensional coordinates for our 3D grid, and then the position of the sphere, and then also the radius of the sphere, we can get then the length of the UV, so or the point of the coordinates, minus the position of our sphere. And then we can return one or zero according to the fact uh, if the length is smaller than the radius. So if the length is going to be smaller than the radius of our sphere, so basically if the length from the point in the 3D grid, like let's say this is our point in the 3D grid, and this is the position of the sphere, so this is the length between the point and the position of the sphere. If this is smaller than the radius, which is this segment here, so if the length is smaller than the radius, means we are inside our sphere. So we can mark this uh, cell of the matrix with the number 1. So that's what we are doing by returning 1 or 0. So uh, this will return 1 if... Uh, point is inside sphere or is actually touching it if we say minus or equal so let's make uh, an example here and let's say that the uh, output one is going to be equal to sphere s sdf in which we get as uv we can get the signed normalized coordinates because uh, we are working in a domain that goes between minus one to one uh, the position is going to be a vector let's actually define it here as sphere pos 
and define it as a vector like 0, 0 0.5, actually let's say it's 0, 0, that's the going to position of this field, it's going to be in the center of our three-dimensional uh, grid. And then a radius, let's say the radius is going to be 0 0.5, okay. So we need to connect this now to the output. Ooh, and as you can see, we got now a sphere rendered in 3D space uh, using a volumetric rendering, using isosurfaces. Um, let's connect it to a GGL material so we have a bit of lightning interacting with the sphere. All right. And we may want to modify the value that represents the step to calculate the normals. And this is called the epsilon. So let's get it here and we can try to modify to see if then the normals start to look a bit better. Uh, it's a bit tricky. But there we are, basically. And cool, let's now render another sphere. So let's see, if you're following uh, what I'm doing, you should be able to, to know how to create the next sphere. So let's call this actually sphere one. And uh, be careful not to use the word sphere because the word sphere is actually a reserved word in gen which represents the function to create a sphere with the vertices. So that's not, we don't want to override it because probably we're going to have some errors. Um, so then let's create sphere 2 and this is going to be, let's actually change our sphere pos so that it's equal to a vector 0 0.500 0, 0. and let's make it this slightly smaller at 0 0.3 and then the output we want to make it equal to sphere 1 plus sphere 2 because remember this is just a scalar value right this is just uh, either a, a 1 or a 0 and this case is going to be is going to be a 2 where the sphere overlap with each other but uh, we are only looking out for cells that have the value 1 and as you can see what the a cool thing that is happening is that the sphere are kind of fused into each other so this is uh, very similar to what happens when we make ray marching with uh, fragment shaders we can kind of fuse uh, objects into each other uh, actually using the same sign distance function i'm using here and uh, we can do the same with ISO surfaces. So just for fun, let's create another sphere. And let's give it a position of 0 0.5 and 0 on the X. And let's call it sphere 3. And let's sum that to sphere 3 as well. And we got another sphere on the top. So that's pretty cool. But what if we don't want to use spheres instead? We want to use, for example, uh, cubes and other shapes. Well, in that case, we need to look for the appropriate sign distance functions and insert them into our code. For example, on this page, which is uh, the, on the uh, Inigo Quillet's uh, blog, we can see that there are a lot of uh, sign distance functions that we can get and integrate into our code. For example, let's take the one with the box. Let's go into max and let's pass it here. Uh, we need to modify it because in gen, in the gen language, we don't have types, so we cannot uh, use vector here. We don't have any types at all. Uh, all the rest looks good. So, okay, doesn't crash. And let's say that now we want to add a box. So we write here box. And so the sign distance function, as it's written by Nigo Quillet, it wants already basically the vector that goes uh, from the 3D grid to our position. So let's create a vector and call it box pos. And let's put it like minus 0. Point f minus, uh, yeah, 0 0.5, 0 0.50. And so uh, for P here, I think it means uh, the box pos uh, minus uh, our coordinates, which we uh, say we are using S norm, and then B, which I have no idea what is that. Maybe it's like the size of the sphere. And then let's try to add the box to that and see what happens. Oh, uh, we get something which is not what I was thinking. Okay, no, actually this is not the, um, a number. This is, I think it's a vector that represents the size of the box. So let's try to make like a box 0 0.20. 0. 
0.5 and then actually this from Inigo Quillets is actually a really um, a sign distance function it means it doesn't give us one of zero it really just gives us the distance so let's modify this function to return uh, uh, to return just one or zero if the distance is like small than a certain value let's say like 0 0.3 and now it's working this is our box so if we try to modify this size okay this is the zeta size of this box so let's try to make it bigger yeah there we go and so basically that's the way to create multiple um shapes with isosurf we need to create sign distance functions like if we will do like we will do when writing a rain marching shader and then we need to check if these uh functions have a certain length and then uh, write one if uh, uh, the coordinates are intersecting those functions are zero if not and then we can create very cool shapes we can even fuse them together and whatnot and the beauty of these is that the contrary to a fragment shader we can still just have grid shapes and normal shapes inside here and uh, use them together with uh, uh, with this is a surface shape so they are still in the same realm although uh, they are using volumes to be rendered okay so i think this will set you on track if you want to explore further uh, iso surfaces um, if you have any questions or anything let me know you can of course always contact me by joining the patreon download this patch by joining the patreon plus the one i showed in the beginning and above all keep having fun with max and your brains so see you soon everyone ciao